being at the house like where we both used to live is so like torturing and so awful. We change a lot. We both have our own goals and unfortunately our goals didn't align. So you made it to episode three. As you guys know, I've never seen a YouTuber go from breakup video and show absolutely everything that has gone afterwards. From the mental breakdowns to getting over to Hi, my name is Adeline Morin, and you're watching A Mental Breakdown. <laughs> oh my god. I feel like just getting over a breakup is so taboo and nobody really talks about it because it's such a dark point in your life. And I've never seen it before on YouTube, so I just wanted to be that big sister that you can look up to or help go through a breakup together if you're going through a breakup at the same time. Cause girl, October is the month of breakups. But it's been a couple months now since Matt and I broke up and I feel like I have gone through majority of the stages of getting over a breakup. I feel like I can kind of speak on it. Here, let me show you. The stages of a breakup. I found this chart online somewhere, but it had it was so relevant to my case. But this, I feel like, is the most accurate stages of going over and going through a breakup. For some people, this can take months. For some people, this can take years. For some people, it could take days. Um, for me personally, it took like two months. But depending on how long you've been with the person, how long you feel like you started to fall out of love with them, so many factors that come into it. Let me break it down. Step number one, denial. <laughs> denial my good old friend it was the day that I got home from LA I just finished beauty class and I, Matt wasn't coming home he was he had work it was done I was like hey where are you a couple hours rolled by he hasn't responded and then I'm in the shower he he's here and he's like we need to talk so he sits me down and he's like I don't think that we should be together anymore but like we've been fighting for so long so I was like okay whatever we had like a fight he left girl she was in denial so I called up my girlfriend I'm like bring bring do you want to go clubbing tomorrow she's like bring bring yes I do so we head on over to the city. We go to the best nightclubs in Toronto. I dress in my little Euphoria Maddie outfit. I was feeling myself. We got a little hotel. We are just having a good old girls night. Girl, she didn't think she was broken up here. is depression about a week of Matt and I not texting I am always the one to text him but I was like you know what this time I'm not doing it a whole week with no texting no communication that's when it started to kind of hit me and I started kind of weighing out the pros and cons of the relationship and if there's more pros if there's more cons I think in conclusion I found out that there's more cons and that's when I kind of started to spiral breakup day five <laughs> update on life <laughs> I've eaten Chinese food like almost every single day since. I got dinner for two, but it was really only dinner for one. I mean, it was for Blue and I. I feel like I've gone through so many phases already. Like I've gone through, I've gone through like sadness and then hatred and anger. I don't know, maybe it'll come in like waves. But just watched a full season of Jane the Virgin and I was talking to my assistant Holly and we're thinking about doing like a series, like a mental health series. So it's like the only thing that's like getting me really excited up over YouTube. Right now I literally, I like can't focus on YouTube. But I feel like I'm really just taking it day by day. But I think I was in denial at first. Now I'm starting to feel like maybe this is like something that's meant to happen and something that's meant to be. Like maybe we're not meant to be together right now. Maybe, I don't know.
Because Matt is, Matt is the only guy that I've ever known. He's my only boyfriend that I've ever had since high school. We've been dating for five and a half years. I always thought that I was an independent person, but losing a huge part of what kind of your identity was, literally my branding with like couple-y things, it's, it's kind of like a big shock. <laughs> So I remember a week after I went over to Matt's house and one thing that really helped me that my life coach told me to do is to write all of your feelings down on a card or a piece of paper, which is what I did. I wrote a little card for him because once you show up at their doorstep, you're probably going to forget everything that you're about to say. And it helped so much. I wrote everything down that I was feeling, why I think it's better that we're apart. And that's kind of where everything started to hit. And... I remember I would spend a lot of time like just sleeping, trying to really just take care of myself, but also trying to work and try and distract myself because thinking about it too much is also not good. Anger, believe it or not, <laughs> the happiest place on the internet also gets angry. I remember for me personally, there were a couple days where I was super angry at him or even just angry at the world. I would be like, you know what? He should see other girls and realize how amazing I am. And when the, 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 I don't know, I feel like ang the anger phase is such a bad phase. I remember it was the day that Matt and I filmed the breakup video that we had a huge fight. But I feel like as long as you know that you're in that phase, it'll be easier to get yourself out of it. What the fuck? Like, you said that you were supposed to be here. I, like, I don't have time to wait around for you all day. Like, you need to be here on time when you said that you're going to be here. <laughs> The next phase is acceptance. Now this one was a hard one to wrap my little brain around. Just realizing myself and realizing what I like to do, what I do for myself, what I do for self-care, what I genuinely enjoy, not just for the both of us, but for just me. Doing things for just me. So I remember I've had a life coach for about a year now. She's also studying to be a certified therapist. During this time, these are the times where I didn't want to talk to her the most, but these are the times that I needed to talk to her the most. <sighs> I just got home listening to sad breakup songs because I haven't cried a lot and I'm trying to process it. For Blue's calendar, they asked me to send over like cute photos of her throughout the year and I was looking at photos throughout the year and I don't know, I just saw like the picture of Matt and I when we bought the house. It's just so great. Like, life is so crazy. <laughs> and then I was, I was at a restaurant with my mom and my sister, and I was just looking at pictures from the last, like, two years. And, like, Matt and I fought. <laughs> Sorry, I ran out of space. <sighs> Matt and I fought a lot as a couple, but I think... As friends, we were so, we had so much fun. I was talking to him about this when we broke up. It's just so sad that when you break up with someone in a relationship, you also lose them as a friend. <laughs> he was literally my only friend. <laughs> just kidding, I have other friends. They're going to be like, I don't know, what the fuck. <laughs> I think right now we are not meant to be a couple, but it's just really sad that you have to lose your best friend for you to grow and move on. And is it just me or do like tears taste really good? <laughs> oh my god. It just sucks because like the, the first person that I wanted to talk about me breaking up with was him. 
like I would tell him everything and I told him like it sucks because you know everything about me and I know everything about him and like I don't even know how you would still be friends after a relationship like how are you supposed to move on I don't think I would be able to move on if we were texting each other every day still oh my god ah emotion <laughs> fuck <laughs> oh my god i thought i was handling it so well <laughs> it also sucks because when you break up with someone you lose their dog and their mom and their dad and the people that you would spend christmas with every single year and celebrate birthdays with every single year something that i've also been thinking about is I don't, like, people always are like, is, are they your soulmate? I'm like, this is my soulmate. These are my soulmates. Like, in another life, I would meet my soulmate. But I'm like, I don't even know if I believe in soulmates. Like, do you have a soulmate out there? Or is there just, like, people that are higher percentages of compatibility to you and lower compatibility to you? Like, everybody's a little bit fucked up. <laughs> like will you ever be satisfied and that's where it's scary like was matt my soulmate or is my soulmate out there like should i look or like so scary because he could meet someone and he can marry someone and i could meet someone and i can marry someone and how are you supposed to know if they're right for you <sighs> Also, yesterday, Matt asked me if I got lip injections. I was like, no, I've just been crying all day. That's why my lips are big. <laughs> ah! One thing that she always told me, she's like, Adeline, meditation is the type of thing where when you're going through something, it's when you don't want to do it the most, but it's when you do need to do it the most. It's the same with just talking to people. But the acceptance was hard. I remember when people would ask me what our breakup, I'd be like, you know what? The timing was just right. Like maybe we'll get back together one day if it's meant to be. And I kept telling myself that over and over and over and over again. Recovery. I feel like recovery was a huge part of my learning about myself, my self-development, my evolution. <laughs> And to the new person that I am today, to the better person that I try to be every single day. So I filmed this segment. This was with my life coach, Kylie. This was fresh out of the breakup. I feel like it's even in the acceptance recovery stage where things were very touchy. If you brought stuff up, I would be emotional about it. Not really knowing what my life purpose is or what I'm going to be doing in my life. Because my whole life, I thought I was going to be spending with this person. And this breakup just like fucked it all up. Which, by the way... <laughs> Kylie calls me Adelaine or Adeline and I just want to let you guys know I saw that you guys comment in my vlogs and stuff like that they're like you guys are like Kylie your life coach is saying your name wrong guys my mom and dad call me Adlen my teachers growing up will call me Adeline or Adeline I just like I kind of like it it feels kind of like French I don't know I never correct people when I say like there's really no right or wrong way of saying my name I just say Adeline it's like Madeline without the M. So don't say anything about the way that Kylie says my name because I saw you guys commenting on the vlog. I kind of like it. Okay, anyway. Hey guys, so this is my life coach Kylie. Hi. <laughs> um, I feel like, how long have we been working together? Um, just about a year, I believe. Mm -hmm. On my way to have my meeting with my life coach right now. I like to bring blue in my meetings. Hello. Oh, I was just looking at this and I was like, what's happening? <laughs> Guys, I'm FaceTiming Kylie right now. She's my life coach. And I just told her that we did two huge things today. We bought the condo and we got the car. Ah! Ah, she's like coming into 2020 with a bang. With a bang. Yeah, we've been working together for like about a year. Mm -hmm. And um, the clip that you guys are about to watch, this was me fresh out of the breakup. It was, I think it was a week or two weeks after. Mm -hmm. It was pretty fresh. Yes, I was like just, two weeks. I remember I was like so emotional during that time and I really wanted to film it and like bring you guys through the process of going through a relationship and a breakup. Um, and Kylie's helped me a lot through it. Um, so Kylie's a life coach. Um, maybe you can like discuss like what the difference between like a life coach and a therapist is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a life coach, or excuse me, a therapist is really focused on the past and 
healing from old wounds um, and a life coach is focused on moving forward and but many times when you move forward you have to actually go back and visit the past mm -hmm. because what prevents you from making progress in your life is typically rooted in the past so like life coaching is sort of an integration of past present and future so typically um, you know we work on on goals how you're spending your time um, we do work on you know mental wellness and um, just improving your life and going you know going after your dreams yeah and then sometimes we deal with you know breakups because <laughs> Life happens. Life happens, and we're focusing. Oh shoot! Is this Andre? Andre, why are you messing up the clip? Oh my god, how do I decline it? Ah, sorry, Andre. <laughs> Kylie's also thinking of doing a YouTube channel, so make sure to check her out. I am. Well, you have it by then. Yeah, I'm in Los Angeles County. Out of all the adolescents that sought mental health treatment, me 60% didn't get it. So whether they can't afford it, they can't, they don't have the transportation, the they didn't like their therapist. Um, so it's just you know, and think about all the people who didn't even ask for help. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's hard to ask for help. Like I remember when I was in high school, like I would ask my guidance counselor for help, but it took me so much to like go up to her. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people start feeling ashamed that they're struggling when honestly it's struggling and pain it is like is a part of the human experience and um, it doesn't make you weak to ask for support it makes you it makes you strong. I was telling Annaline that vulnerability is strength. Yeah, everyone needs a therapist and or a life coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Truth. Yeah, I would be a mess without her. Oh, even Ariana Grande says that. She's like, I would be a mess without my therapist. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it's so nice that people are talking about mental health and whoever like isn't able to afford it. I think I hope that like these videos, I don't know, can help a little bit or help can help you relate or yeah, just know that you're not alone and that that it can be temporary and that the hard times pass. Yeah, it's crazy. I feel like I've already changed so much in a couple weeks. <laughs> you're like, mm -hmm. yep. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so time passes and just stay strong and ask for support. Holly's on her way home. But I'm about to have a call with my life coach because she's been helping me a lot just like with my mental health and breaking down. Like every time I have a breakdown, I text her or I call her. She always calls me back. She's like the best. But I need my tripod. Literally going in the snow with no pants. Oh my God. Bye. Oh my God. Where is my tripod? Hello. Okay. Inside. Got my stuff. I'm coming. Got blue. Let's do this call. So we filmed our breakup video. Um, and literally in the breakup video, like he was crying and, or I was crying and he wasn't. And I'm like, oh my God, like people are gonna like think that he's crazy or they're like not gonna like him or like feel like, I don't know. I just like don't want people to hate him but it's just like the way that he processes things like he doesn't process it right away like it takes him a long time to process something like he bottles everything in I don't know or he'll just like ignore a problem and I don't know so, so he uh, um sort of represses or goes into a state of denial which mm -hmm. those are um you know defense mechanisms mm -hmm. To protect himself like, and also with the processing thing sometimes there's people that can process emotions really quickly and then sometimes people other people process information really slowly yeah i feel like that's him and he's like gone through so much this year like i don't know what's gonna happen to him like he's like gone through two deaths and then also the breakup of his girlfriend of like five years so i just like i don't know a part of me feels bad but at the same time like he oh. broke up with me and he needs to be in control of his own mental health because uh, unfortunately you can't change you can't force people to make changes mm -hmm. 
have to want to make changes. So, Mm -hmm. and then going back to, you know, you being really busy, are you like, do you want to continue being really busy or do you want to weave in a, like a little bit more like self-reflection and processing? And there's no right or wrong answer. Because a lot of people have to break up, go like, they're going out every night, they're super busy because it's just the distractions sort of help. Yeah. I think like with the holidays coming up, I kind of am forcing myself to be busy, like with launches and like a a big bear trip and everything. Like I'm kind of forcing myself to be busy, Mm -hmm. but I'm hoping maybe in January I could like take some time to like cool down and yeah. I think that's smart. Um, I'll share with you something that was recommended to me when I was going through a breakup once because I was like thinking about it a lot and obsessing about it and like it just constantly like throughout the day and the person who I was working with at the time suggested that I take even just like 20 minutes 30 minutes a day where I can just sort of sit with the fact of this that we have broken up and essentially mourn the relationship because if I'm just obsessively thinking about it and thinking about this or why we broke up or why it didn't work, that can just sort of take up a lot of headspace as opposed to like going mm-hmm. to the heart and like just mourning, mourning it. Mm-hmm. I think I've been almost kind of doing that without realizing it. Like I did the journaling, which helped a lot. Yeah. And like I was doing laundry and there was like, this note and it said like it was like months ago and it was like Adeline like I love you so much like I hope you know that I'm trying and like it's like don't forget that I like fucking love you it just, it just like said something like that and I just like saw it in his hamper and I'm like oh my god like I miss him and then I realized all the things that was like going wrong and I like I don't know I just like it's easy for me to like remember all of the good things and be like oh my god like I really miss him like I want him back like that note and then I don't know I have like a like a note on my phone it's like (laughs) the pros and cons of Matt and I just look at the cons list and I feel better and I'm like okay Adeline you need to relax and you need to focus on yourself well having those emotions and missing him is also a part of like the healing process Mm -hmm. and because it's not like an either or situation like I have to, like, I have to focus on me. It's going to, things are going to come up when you least expect it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you'll get sad and you'll miss him. And then, you know, it's just, it's sort of, it comes in, like, waves, you know? Yeah, that's, like, that's exactly how it's been feeling. When you find notes like that. I know, and I, I have, like a closet because like I can't get myself to throw out the photos and I literally just put all of the photos and the notes in the closet and like I don't know that's just I don't know yeah I I I also think that's really healthy um you you know you don't have to throw out the photos you know they're memories Mm -hmm. so it's like you sort of want to think when your heart is mended from this and you're just like not even thinking about math like maybe in 10 years or something or five years I mean obviously it's a lot no no it's it's gonna happen a lot sooner than that yeah whether it's two years five years ten years like you know you want to ask yourself am I gonna want these photos Mm mm-hmm yeah it's like yeah he was like a huge part of my life in like high school and like starting my YouTube like I I literally met him when I was like at 300,000 and like I was entering the Knicks face awards which is like one of the things that helped me grow my YouTube channel yeah he's just been a huge huge part of your life Mm -hmm. yeah and I like we're we're still friends so I like can't get myself to like throw out the photos but like I also can't see the photos every day like when I wake up and like every day in the kitchen and stuff like that I mean, that is definitely, like, one of the first things that people do, like, after a breakup, is they take down the photos, mm-hmm. and they, like, redecorate the house, like, everything. I did. <laughs> I, I decorated it Christmas. <sighs> so, I'm, like, decorating for Christmas, and I ordered these, like, custom some stockings last year, and they didn't come until after Christmas, of course, because they are from China, but... It looks like this. <laughs> and I have it for me, Lola, Matt, and Blue. And like, I was gonna put me and Blue in the vlog, but then I just like, I knew that there would be comments being like, 
Where's Matt and Lola's stocking? Like, where's Matt and Lola? We haven't seen Matt and Lola in the vlogs in so long. And it's like, I never respond to those comments, but guys, like I really see them and it really like sucks to see them. But I'm not gonna include this in the vlog, but I'm gonna just include it on here. <laughs> Does that even look good? I don't even know. Adeline in blue. Just us two. I don't know. I feel like I always saw comments about like, where's Matt? Where's Lola? And it never bothered me like until we broke up. And now it's like, I don't know. It's just very personal. And like when we first broke up, I wasn't ready. And then just like seeing the comments is like the icing on top of the cake. I'm ready now. And that's why I'm filming when I would see comments about it. When I wasn't ready, it really affected me. I don't know. We decorated for Christmas! Do you like it? Pop! Yeah! <laughs> when Matt came over on Sunday, he was like, so I see you took the photos down of me, but you kept the ones of Lola. And I was like, yeah, because I love Lola. <laughs> and Lola didn't break up with me. <laughs> You're going to New York tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And what's happening in New York? Um, I have a Marc Jacobs brand deal. They're just doing like an event. And I have to be there and then it's just like, it's just sad being here by myself. Like Holly literally comes here like from nine to three and then from three to like midnight, I'm just twiddling my thumbs, like bored, think overthinking, like FaceTiming my friends, like asking my friends if they're busy, my friends are busy and I'm like, so I don't know. I just think that when I'm here, I just, it's just sad cause I used to live with him here and it's weird not having him here. So I just, I don't know, I feel like I don't know if it'll be easier to process our breakup in New York and LA, but it just like, I think it'll just help me like focus on me and like not be in the house that we used to be in and like think about it a lot. Definitely. It's like the person who leaves, right, the environment typically have, like they might have an easier time initially than the person who stays behind. Mm -hmm. in the environment. environment. Yeah. So I do think that being in LA will mm -hmm. help you. Like um, even going to the grocery store and like even just like doing the things that we used to do I would look at it and then I would like think of him and it's like I don't know if he feels the same way but like I just like everything that pops up that we did I just like think of him and then I get like sad and don't you think that there's a part of him too that's also really sad just like you yeah I think he's sad he just like he doesn't show it and he tries to be like I don't know. He tries to be like manly and like this doesn't bother me, but I don't really know how he's feeling. He's just like been like, I feel like before I used to be able to like know his every move. I know exactly what he's going to say. Like we're always on the same page, but now I feel like he's just doing his own thing or I don't know. He's just like, at, we're not on the same wavelength. Well, I'll say this, that whatever a person suppresses, will eventually find a way to express itself, whether it's in unhealthy or healthy ways. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, losing someone that you've been with for five years that you care about, like, no matter how he's processing it now, there's definitely a part of him that is also mourning too. Yeah. 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 Um, so, okay. Sorry, I think I want to bring up one more thing that I've just been okay, thinking yeah. about. On our breakup video, I don't know if I'm going to like keep it in. In our breakup video, he he was like, I don't know, maybe in like a year or five years, like we could get back together or something like that. And I was like, I don't know. I feel like when you say that, it just like gives people hope. And like it kind of gave me hope, but there's always the chance that he might meet someone or I might meet someone and want to start a relationship and then we just never get back together and just like, I don't know. It's just like a gamble no matter what. Yeah, and I mean that when it comes to separating from someone, it's like a risk that you have to be willing to take. Mm -hmm. And I think when people say things like that during a breakup, it's because it, make, it makes it easier for them to just to, in the moment of the breakup to think okay I might I get might back to this. yeah 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 I like I kept thinking about that and I was like oh my god like I probably shouldn't get in a relationship because like what if he wants to get back together but like I don't know I feel like I shouldn't stop myself I don't know I don't plan on going getting into a relationship anytime soon like I'm really excited to be single but like I don't know it's just scary like 
thinking that he might meet someone and that might be his person or I might meet someone and that might be my person. It's hard for me to let go of the fact that, I don't know, part of me thinks that this is like a break, but this is like a break up. And it's like the way that he was saying it. It will just take time. And it's sort of, this weird thing happens. Like after you sort of heal, like the, the person that you were like obsessing over or like so sad about or you thought you like you're so scared that they would find someone it's so interesting because you when that happens you're typically in a place where you don't you're not that affected by it yeah i hope you know? i mean my suggestion would be to just really try it as much as possible keep your thinking in the present moment and then, um, and then, you know, you're going to have those moments where you're sort of mourning and you're, like, going down a path. But I, do you feel like you're ruminating for too long? Uh, what does ruminating mean? <laughs> ruminating means, like, thinking, thinking about something for a very long time without... What, what is the definition? But it's basically <laughs> obsessed, like, continuing to think about something you can when you're starting to sort of spin out you might just want to just keep the mind like keep your mind on the time like or there's like a thing where like you i've heard of people i've never done this i've heard of people who will actually set timer like if they're like feeling it like really bad and they want to allow that feeling because like, like i don't i don't want you to suppress your emotion <laughs> you know? I, th I think that's good <laughs> yeah yeah and so the other thing what when do you go back to toronto i come home on next wednesday one day because i have a hair appointment that day i'm gonna pick up blue and then i'm going to la the day after so i'm only home okay. for one day and then when when is the next period that you're going to be home for like a significant amount of time christmas so i think i'll be back december 10th okay yeah all right, and I know you sort of live in the middle of nowhere, but <laughs> is there any, like, any activities out there, like a dance studio? So, or I am hopefully going to get a mortgage pre-approval, and hopefully, fingers crossed, I don't know if it's going to happen, move into a condo in the city by I want it to be I literally wanted it to be this month but I don't know because I'm not gonna be home I think you could buy a house without actually being there but then yeah you can sign all the like the, the paperwork like via like DocuSign. on yeah DocuSign fingers crossed I'll have the condo by the time I get back mm -hmm. that way I don't have to like I don't know it's just sad being here <laughs> and I can go to a soul cycle class and I can do so, stuff so there's there's nothing where you are now? There's a movie theater, and there's so only so many movies that you can watch by yourself. Um, what about, I know last week we spoke about a French tutor. Yeah. Holly saw that on um, my to-do list. She was like, a French tutor? And I was like, Holly, you need to understand how bored I am every day. And she goes, Adeline, I literally look at your calendar and I get stressed out for you. And I'm like, I I don't know. I just like, I don't know. I, I'm trying to keep myself busy every second of the day. And I don't know if that's okay, but I don't know. Again, I think it's a balance, right? It's like, if staying busy helps you, then that's okay. But then maybe you start that nightly journaling practice. Mm -hmm. Did you do any of the homework? <laughs> I don't know if I did. I checked out the note though. I don't. I don't know if I. It was. I email. I emailed you some things to like help you get get through this week. Um. Okay. You can always. You can always do it when. When you get back. Yeah, no worries. It's just like a daily self-love plan, right? Because I think that would be helpful for you. It's a like as you're starting to more focus on yourself. There's a values assessment in there, so we can so we can really see what value system you're living by. Because when your values are in alignment, then you're gonna just and you're acting by your values, that's when you're gonna feel most authentic and powerful. Yeah, so we can just put that on pause because I know you're gonna be super busy. If there's one thing you know you sort of want to address or get out of the rest of the session, what would that be? I don't even know if I should even talk about this, but like 
I've like been on Bumble and like I've been swiping and like I don't know I message like two guys and like they message back but I just like wasn't excited about it I don't know a part of me like wants to rebound and I don't even know if that's healthy but another part of me is like this sucks like all boys suck like I give up on everything there's nothing wrong with it sometimes it actually helps um but again if you feel like you don't need that then more power to you <laughs> yeah because sometimes it's weird like even you know kissing a different guy for the first time is yeah like weird after a breakup you're like what i don't know i've just like the thought of like having someone to give me attention is exciting but like actually doing it i was like ew i don't know i just felt like weird because I haven't dated in, like, five years. Yeah, you'll know when you're ready. Yeah. But, like, there's nothing wrong with, like, going on Bumble, you know, <laughs> every once in a while just because it's, like, fun. A subscriber found my Bumble and they tweeted it to me and I was like, oh, my God. So, I'm, I'm curious, too. Like, I mean, not that this really matters at all, that when you Google your name that that comes up. It just, like, bothers me. A little bit like I did a premiere of my YouTube video so it's like live comments mm -hmm. and I was like hey guys how are you enjoying today's video and literally like almost all of the comments were like did Otto and Matt break up like guys we shouldn't ask her that because I feel like if she was ready then she would tell us and they'd be like did Otto and Matt break up like where's Matt like Lola's there where's Matt and it's like I don't know like it suck seeing those comments because like i really liked that video and all of the comments were on matt and i don't know i feel like people like on youtube they feel like they're entitled to know everything but like both matt and i really aren't ready yet like i'm scared about the comments and i'm sure that he is too and like as much as i want to say that it doesn't affect me it does like especially when it's something like so personal of course i mean that's why you know some celebrities don't even like read the magazines and mm -hmm. stuff or online or they have someone actually like monitor it mm -hmm. so they don't have to be bothered with it i don't know if i'm remembering this right but i'm like 80 percent sure that his mom took this photo <laughs> yep um, I think that's why it's good that you're waiting because hopefully by the time you post it, you'll be ready. Yeah, and maybe like, is there a way? I guess we can talk about it when when the time comes. But just something to think about: is there a way that you could post this video and have the perspective that you're just really doing it for yourself and for Matt, and not even read the comments? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah, because. It really doesn't matter what anyone says. Mm -hmm. Like, this is your life. It was your relationship. Yeah. And yes, you're like a public figure, but, you know, you know that you're doing the best thing for you. Mm -hmm. So, oh, I noticed on in your note um, for your theories that you said, like, you you had a total breakdown. So, how like, are you having breakdowns often? Only, like, when I saw the note, like, I don't know, like, it kind of like what you said like it comes in waves like i'll be happy the whole day and then i'll think of like something triggering like his grandma and i'll just like get really sad and i'll start listening to a spotify playlist about s breakup songs or i'll like google breakup songs and spotify and just like start crying in my car and singing really bad i think i feel like i text you like every time like <laughs> something bad happens yeah that's fine you can definitely text me um and you know crying is healthy it's a release of your emotions mm -hmm. and, and I, I didn't tell you this but i think it was it was the day that he was supposed it was it was sunday when he was supposed to come here and he was like no i have work and i sent you that video and i freaked out to my dad and he was like, Adeline, you just need to calm down. And he gave me a hug, which was really nice. And then... Anytime you can incorporate movement when you're, like, dysregulated, it's really going to help move that energy out of your body, for sure. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it's like, that's why sometimes people actually like to do therapy and walk sometimes. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Or like, um, ha- like, or even go on long walks with like their partner or something and like have like these deeper conversations because there's something about the act of walking. Mm-hmm. I feel like if I didn't go on that walk, I wouldn't have apologized for like freaking out on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, it's always like, yeah, when you're dysregulated, you, these are sort of the questions you want to ask yourself. Like, can I solve this problem right now? If you can solve the problem, solve it. Mm -hmm. If you can't, then you have to like put it aside. And then you ask yourself, um, who can I reach out to? Right. Because you have to know the different levels of of friends. Mm -hmm. Like some person can like handle you at your worst. And some friends can't. Yeah. No. Um, and then what do I need to do to regulate? And that would be the walk. And then basically, um, what are my enhancement practices? Mm-hmm. Right? So enhancement practices are going to make you more resilient. Mm-hmm. So that would be whatever, learning French, mm-hmm. soul cycle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah journaling those are all like enhancement practices Mm -hmm. um okay so i've got to go we didn't set a goal for this week i don't know if you want to um i feel like i just like i have a lot going on with new york and pennsylvania maybe like we can keep it chill for this week Uh, that's that's sort of what i was thinking too and then when i'm home and like able to focus on stuff we can set goals and I'll try yeah. to do the homework this week whenever I have like downtime yay thank you so much for this call and thank you for letting me record it yeah of course anytime right. bye bye um but I hope you guys enjoy our little segment like right fresh out of the breakup um I mean she's she says that she's been a mess but <laughs> I <laughs> She always impresses me. <laughs> Ooh, I look crazy. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed our little session. It's always like super hard, like putting something so vulnerable out on the internet. But I hope that like this encourages you guys, if you're going through something, to ask for help and not be embarrassed um, to accept that you need. I feel like everybody needs a therapist and everybody needs at least a friend to talk to. Um, and it feels so good to talk to someone about what you're going through or even just writing it down on a piece of paper it helps so much like yeah you told me to like write in a journal Mm -hmm. like all the things that I'm feeling and it just it takes all of the worries and overthinking in your head onto a piece of paper and you don't have to think about it anymore Mm -hmm. it's a very it's very cathartic Mm -hmm. and yeah I I write all the time well hope you guys enjoyed um we're gonna go now (laughs) bye (laughs) (laughs) The last stage, which I feel like I'm kind of in the process of getting over the breakup. Now, I feel like for everybody, this is very different. I feel like, especially for guys, it's really hard for them to go through these stages because they're spending a lot of time in denial. And I saw a lot of your guys' comments. You guys are like, Matt isn't crying in the breakup video. Da 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 da. You guys don't understand that every single person, not even just guys, every single person has a different way of coping with stress or trauma or a breakup or whatever. And for some people, they take longer. They take longer and certain periods or stages <laughs> but getting over the breakup I feel like is just a balance of grieving it accepting it thinking about it writing songs about it looking at old pictures looking at old things remembering old memories and being grateful that it happened and being grateful that you got to experience those things and closing the end of a chapter I feel like having an equal balance of focusing on those memories and remembering those memories and being grateful for those memories and also distracting yourself with friends Spending time with people that you love, whether it's your family, your girlfriends, traveling, traveling made it so much easier, at least for me. I know that not everybody can do it, but even spending time at a friend's house or spending time in a hotel, I don't really know. Get crazy, I don't know. Um, But immediately after Matt and I's breakup, I went to New York and I spent time with my friend Haley and it's been so fun. I feel like being in the environment that you and that person once were in 
just it triggers you and like I remember I would go to the grocery store and I would remember Matt and I grocery shopping all the time and I would get upset and I would feel so negative and even just being in the house that we were both in and waking up in the bed that we were both once in it's a lot so I don't know just if you're able to spend time away from all everything spending time with girlfriends I went on a trip with my girlfriends in Big Bear and it was so fun just distracting yourself and finding yourself and finding what makes you happy having a balance of those two I feel like was so important and I feel like I did kind of a little bit well I don't know we'll see next month <laughs> um, everybody goes through a breakup in a different way for some people it takes longer for some people it takes shorter and no matter what going through a breakup is gonna suck and it's gonna fuck you up and it's you're gonna cry and you're I don't know maybe you won't cry maybe you'll cry in a year and it won't hit you till a year you'll be in fucking denial for a year <laughs> Or maybe you'll get through it in like a month. It really depends. Everybody's different. These were the stages of my breakup. I also just wanted to add to anybody going through a breakup. One thing that I know was cliche and I know it's the last thing that you want to hear, but everything is going to be okay. And you may not see the light at the end of the tunnel, but there is. I thought that I had my whole life planned. I thought that I knew exactly what I wanted in life, but sometimes life throws you curveballs and sometimes <laughs> you're wrong about shit and sometimes you have to reevaluate and sometimes, I don't know, as I said in the first episode, I feel like you have to go through the pain or go through the bad in order to appreciate the good. I feel like this breakup has showed me that I can be even more independent. I learned what I what truly makes me happy and I learned that I can do things for me and not feel bad about it. Not that Matt would make me feel bad about anything, but I can do things selfishly for me, for me only. And it's completely okay. Um, I also realized in the relationship that I was very comfortable and now that I look back on it I don't know why I allowed myself to get so comfortable in a relationship Why I would never work out why I would eat like shit why I wouldn't be achieving my goals Why I wouldn't be pushing myself to achieve my goals not that Matt was holding me back But I was holding myself back because I was so comfortable in the relationship and I was so comfortable in my life then and there good to be comfortable but it's also really fun and inspiring to be uncomfortable and it's so crazy to make yourself purposely uncomfortable to become the best version of you. And I, I don't know, I feel like that happened to me this year. 2019, holy shit, was a year. But you know what? I think over the past couple months, I've learned more about myself than I have in a really long time. And dear whoever is also going through a breakup, you got this. It's happening for a reason. You're transforming into your best, most authentic, most powerful self yeah a lot of shitty things will happen and yeah there's a lot of cons to going through breakup but trust me when i say that there's a lot of pros and you're gonna learn so much and you're gonna be grateful that you went through it and keep a journal keep write down everything that you feel it, it really helps and it really makes a big difference i guess we got this <laughs> now one thing that really helped me in the process of getting over her breakup <laughs> Something that I've always, 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 always wanted to do was go to a psychic. And I don't know if I necessarily believe in all of this stuff. I know, it's crazy, I know. We've been so deep and so serious and so, so much has happened within the past three episodes that I kind of want to end this series off, my final episode, on a kind of a lighter note, looking into the future. So next episode, I'm going to be going to a psychic. We're going to be talking about my future husband, my future partner, what she sees for me in my future, and so much more. I've never been to a psychic before. I don't really know what to expect. Like, what is going to happen? Am I going to get possessed? I guess I'll see you guys next Sunday. <laughs> So we just finished the reading with Terry. I can't even, I don't even know what to say. Oh, you're so welcome. You're so welcome, sweetie. <laughs>